Same thing uh, from a services layer. Many of these things most people are familiar with. Configuration, systems integration is a big one. So you're handling a lot of data. And again, this gets back to doing a, a good job designing up front. Because the RFID readers are dramatically different in how they perform. And how they perform from a data perspective is dramatically different. So some readers do a lot of filtering at the reader. So what they're sending is a very small bit of data over the network. Other readers just pass through, and they, spend, they send a lot of information on the network. So if you have something sitting on a stretch wrap machine, for instance, you've got uh, 300 cases on a pallet getting stretch wrapped, and you've got a reader there, and you're reading those 300 cases three or four times a second, and that data is going upstream, that's, that's going to have a significant impact on your network. Now, I'll give you a warning out there about the reader vendors. They play a lot of games with their software. So you'll have reader vendors and sales guys who will come into your shop and they'll say, okay, we're going to set up reader X and we're going to set up our reader here. Now turn them on and we'll see who reads the most. Okay, that's, that's a false way of looking at things because their host software may just keep polling and may just take a header value or take, take part of the tag and every time it sees it, it may give you the result back. So you're looking at this, this one piece of software, and it's ringing up results like, the, like, a, like you know, filling up a Hummer on a gas, at the gas uh, tank. And, and it's just going like that. And you look at the other one, and it read maybe once or maybe twice. And it could be because this reader might actually be better for you, because what it's doing is it's saying, okay, we've got a filter value. We'll get that filter set to read once every 20 seconds unless there's a state change. And that may actually be the better reader. So you have to be careful for what the reader manufacturers do with their onboard software. Active RFID as a technology is vertically integrated. The reason it started out being vertically integrated is most of it wasn't standards-based. So you had companies, and, and Savvy is probably the most notable, they, uh, they, they did a tremendous job with the Department of Defense. They got bought about a year ago by Lockheed Martin. They did a tremendous job with the Department of Defense helping them find containers in the theater. And now every container that's shipped to Oconus uh, outside the continental US has an active RFID tag on it. And it's made a big difference. Now everything inside is getting tagged. And that's a, that's a, a, a huge step improvement for the DOD. But active RFID, they have the tags, they've got the equipment, they've got the readers, and they've got the software. So you can go to typically one vendor for active RFID and get that whole component. And it used to be the same in IT Asset Tracker. There's a, a company called RF Code that uh, has active tags that do a nice job, but didn't get wide-scale adoption because it was very expensive. But they had everything from start to finish work well, but it was just pricey for most people's price point. Passive RFID is very different. It's horizontally focused. So you'll see people out there who just do tags. You'll see companies out there who just do readers. You'll see companies out there who just do specific edge applications and middleware. So passive is somewhat of a different game. Now active realized with, with all the competition coming from the increased performance in passive technology, they have to start slicing themselves up a little bit, offering tags that now are based on an ISO standard so anyone's reader could read these. So because of the, the pressure from the passive community, active RF has started to change as well. But it still follows pretty much this paradigm of active RFID being vertically and passive being horizontally. And then enterprise applications are handled by your you know, typical SAPs and Siebel's and Red Prairie and those type of things. If you look at some of the companies that are out there, from a, uh, a tag perspective, you're going to hear about all of these folks, uh, Alien, Confidex, Raflitech. They're all out there, they've all got good products, they've all, they've all put things together, and, and there's a number of folks who have specific uh, applications for, for very, very novel things. Ralph, Ralph where's Ralph? There. Um, Ralph and, and the, the companies he's with now have focused very uh, specifically on uh, uh, the aerospace industry and doing high value tags and, and, and focusing on one industry and doing a nice job of it. Similarly, some of the equipment vendors you see out there, Rockwell Automation certainly, focusing highly on the manufacturing you know, and, and, and hot process automation within manufacturing. So again, think about what your use case is and what your business 
Odin's very lucky in that, again, we're vendor neutral from the tag, the readers, and, and that type of perspective. We've worked with 20 different readers in our 200 plus projects. And uh, I think we're up to uh, about uh, eight or nine different middleware type of applications and different projects we've deployed. So we've seen the, the sort of the good and the bad of different types of things. The middleware session, Kevin's going to talk in a lot more detail about it, but Oat Systems just got purchased um, by Sensormatic, which is uh, nearly 100% retail focused. And that's, uh, I'm sorry, uh, checkpoint, yeah. So, uh, uh, so the, the, uh, they're nearly 100% retail focused, but you've got other folks in there, very specialty. Globe Ranger is focused primarily on the Department of Defense. Um, Shipcom does a lot within uh, manufacturing and processing. Uh, EPC Solutions, these guys do your basic uh, compliance, and I think the software. What's it, Christine, with the off end of fifteen hundred bucks or two grand or something like that for their compliance software? Uh, that ballpark. I'm not sure about that. Okay. Yeah. So, so Kevin can answer that. So, again, it, it ties back to the slide we had a couple minutes ago. Know what problem you're trying to solve, and then you can put the solution on it. And then you've got, similarly, if you look at those, oops, we'll go back again. If you look at those active RFID vendors, and keep in mind that they're vertically integrated. So you've got someone like a, a WearNet or an AeroScout who has the tags, they've got the mounting, they've got the readers, and they've got the edge apps to do it. So you can see it's a, it's a very different ecosystem now uh, than the passive is. So you've got to keep that in mind as you look at, your, as you look at the solutions. So if you get beyond the vendors to, to solutions, the way people are buying RFID now is to help drive solutions in the marketplace. So if you look out there and you understand your business process, you should be able to drive solutions. Chris is going to take a lot of time and talk about the three layers that we've got in terms of you know, going from commercial off the shelf all the way over to custom design solutions. But one of the things that we've done at, at Odin is to listen uh, quite, quite pragmatically to what end users have in, in terms of their business case. And we can talk a, a lot about them. Uh, this is the largest manufacturer of pipes for the oil and gas industry. They had a business case that said, okay, we can only spend 25 cents a tag on our pipe tracking, but we have a real issue with the type of pipes that we track. Because some are very expensive, they're meant for the high pressure in the gas industry. Some are cheaper, and they're meant for the, the oil industry. But we really, we, we can't tell by looking at them what, what's different. And the barcodes wear off, and we get about a 72% accuracy with barcode. So our engineers ended up creating a mounting system, and essentially, um, it's not quite a wave, what's called a wave guide, but essentially being able to use a, a 10 cent passive tag mounted on a, on a specialty mounting tag in a very austere environment to get 100% read rates as these things go through the, the supply chain from Argentina to uh, the Black Sea to Australia and, and dramatically change it. So they wanted a full solution. Daniel's going to talk a little bit about this Johnson & Johnson uh, kit tracking solution. But it's again, it's the same type of thing. Looking at a business case, looking at the business process, and getting a complete physics-based solution that gets them 100% read rate that incorporates tags, antennas, uh, uh, the conveyors, the software, and that type of thing. Uh, another one of our big clients is a, is a very large retailer who did picking within their warehouse in a, in a cold chain environment. They had $5,000 Motorola handheld readers that they were scanning, that they've been barcode tagging, mean, uh, RFID tagging, they went from barcode to RFID about four years ago, and they've been using handhelds to do it. Well, the, the CIO went one day to go at this processing plant that the process is the totes that carry all these, these things they pick, and they send them through a, an automatic cleaning process where the, they, they've got an arm that dumps out all the junk in and, and then sends it through this uh, hot cleaning process. And he looked in the trash and there, were, uh, there, was a, there was a handheld in the trash that someone had set down while they were doing their work, ended up going through the process and got dumped into the trash. And he said, okay, we need something wearable. So that these guys aren't going to lose and that, uh, that, that they can only take accountability. So we designed and, and developed a wearable solution. We've got a, a smart table as well uh, deployed within the DOD and some aerospace companies for checking in things and inventory control and, uh, and that sort of thing. So again, it's getting beyond cobbling the solutions together uh, yourself and looking for solutions to, to meet a business process.